Hi, my name is Matt Coulter and I'm an architect working for Liberty IT in Belfast and Dublin or Liberty Mutual globally. Today, what we're going to talk about is an open source serverless product that I've been building over the last 12 months and hopefully we'll get to some of the lessons I've learned around the end. So first up, this is what we're going to use to frame today's conversation. We're going to talk about my situation, how I discovered the problem, what the solution was that I found, how I rolled it out, what the results were, and then finally, hopefully, we'll get to some of the lessons I've learned along the way. So first up, my situation. In 2019, I was successful in applying for a promotion, and that took me from being the technical lead over 25 engineers to being an account architect over 200 plus engineers in Belfast and Dublin, or over a thousand if you include globally. But what does that mean? Well, if we look at whenever I was the lead over 25 engineers, we were all working into one strategic business area. We were using a common tech stack and I was the actual technical architect embedded into one of the teams setting the technical roadmap. That meant I knew that I could build things that would help the other teams at a later date. Now, when we roll that up to 200 plus engineers, we're talking about four or more strategic business units with 30 or more teams, all using different tech stacks, and I was asked not to embed directly into one of the teams. What I was actually asked to do was, we decided that we wanted to be a serverless first company, and we wanted to do it in a way that we created the environment that our engineers felt empowered, motivated, and enabled to do it. So I was asked not to leave anybody behind, but let's all go serverless. So first up, what does serverless mean for us? Because we can't go to serverless if we don't know what serverless is. So this is what we call serverless. We could debate all day with the multiple definitions that people have, but we believe serverless is a spectrum and that the serverless first mindset is the correct approach. And what that means for us is that code is a liability, reuse where possible and focus on business value. So that, you might be wondering, I didn't say the word Lambda, I didn't say any AWS service in that, so how can it be serverless? Well, the way we define what is a liability in our tech stacks is we actually use a technique called Wardley mapping. You can hopefully see Wardley's image below me, Simon Wardley, you can find him on Twitter. And that Medium link also will take you to some great tutorials on how to learn more demapping. But we're going to spend just a minute or two and we're going to walk through an example map for how a cafe could sell a cup of tea. And hopefully you can see how this can apply to somebody's tech stack. So this is a graph and you can see at the top of it, we have business and user as the key stakeholders on this map. Everything else is a decomposition of the value chain of a cup of tea. Now that's a lot of words, but all that really means is you can see that all of the dots that pull out from the cup of tea are what makes up the cup of tea, and every dot that pulls out from the next node is what makes up that one. Now if you look at the axes of this graph, on the y-axis you can see at the bottom we have invisible, and at the top we have visible. What that means is things that are low down in this graph are invisible to the end user or customer and things that are right at the top are the things that the customer sees. So in this case, the customer directly sees the cup of tea. If you look at the X axis, you can see it's broken it down into four segments. Genesis, custom built product and commodity. Genesis would be you are building something that has never been built before, brand new, exciting. Commodity or custom built is saying that there is a product for this, but you've needed to tailor it because it didn't quite do what you thought it did. Product is something you can buy off the shelf and commodity is like your electricity. It doesn't matter who you get it from just as long as power comes to your house. So if you look at this actual graph, the user is, or customer, is paying 55 cents for a cup of tea. Now, if you look at where the cup of tea goes from there, five cents to the cup, 15 cents to the tea, 10 cents to the staff. And then 20 cents is going down to the hot water. From there, five cents is going to water. But 15 cents is being directed way left 
to this custom proprietary kettle technology that they're using with only five cents going down into power. So 10 cents out of every 55 cents of tea sold is being invested into some kind of fancy kettle technology. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never drank a cup of tea and then complimented the kettle. So I think that if this was me, I would draw a circle somewhere in that product box and draw a dashed line and say, you need to evolve your kettle usage to be a standard one. And then now that you've evolved closer to commodity, let's work out where you can custom build to be a true differentiator for your business. This is what we do. This is what we did for every team in this business, in, in this market. And that meant that we knew what serverless was, we knew where our teams were, and we knew where they needed to go. Now, the thing that I thought was still holding us back slightly was CloudFormation is amazing. It is the thing on AWS that is what has made it so successful, and nobody can deny that. But if you talk to engineers who have came from an environment where they're deploying Spring Boot applications onto something like Pivotal Cloud Foundry, well, they're used to, they can just have a tiny YAML file and some annotations and away they go. You're going into CloudFormation, you're talking about over a thousand lines. It's not easy to unit test if you can do it at all. And for me, whenever I open someone else's CloudFormation, it's a bit like opening the code for someone else's website. Technically, they should all be the same, but somehow our personality gets injected into the markup somehow. So cloud formation was something we used to sit around and just discuss our horror stories over tea. And that why, that's why to me, it was something I thought, let's try and make this a bit easier. And that's why last July, AWS announced that the CDK, the Cloud Development Kit had become generally available. This was different and revolutionary because it allowed developers to provision infrastructure on AWS using the programming languages they already knew. So you could use Java, Python, .NET, TypeScript. They were the ones that came out of the box and you wrote your TypeScript, it transpiled down to CloudFormation and then that meant that all of your enterprise guardrails were still good. As far as the deploy was concerned, this was still CloudFormation, but as far as the developer was concerned, they're using a language that they know and love. I tried it out and Werner Vogels called CDK a game changer and I completely agree. I took a very common scenario that we have, which is a private API gateway with a custom OAuth2 authorizer Lambda. And that was over 1500 lines of cloud formation and we were writing those by hand. It was painful. I was able to bake everything that I had learned into a custom CDK construct for everybody else to use. And that reduced it down to 14 lines of code, 14 lines of code that they knew they could trust and it just worked. And that's a 99% reduction in code liability. Oh, and by the way, you can write unit tests for all of this, which means you can have CI CD pipelines and you can have confidence in what you're doing. <laughs> to problem solved, that means that at this point, right, end of presentation, we're done. Unfortunately, no, that's, that's not how it works. <laughs> so last December, I was fortunate enough to go to reInvent and I networked with a couple of the key teams that I thought were gonna be part of our serverless journey. First of all, EventBridge, then Amplify and CDK. I also really took advantage of the opportunity to talk to other developers at the event and just listen to people both praising and ranting. When people rant, I always think it's particularly good to listen because whilst most of it is not necessarily true, there's always a gem of truth in there. And I also just tried to keep up with the hundreds of new product announcements that happened over that week. And it was insane. It was like drinking from a fire hose. And that leads me to the real problem. Developers felt completely overwhelmed with content. <laughs> there's so many ways that you can deploy things on AWS with so many competing technologies, with so many configurations that it became a full-time job just to keep up with what the latest is. And then even if you know what technology you wanna use, you'll have maybe 10 or 20 people out there blogging about it with different opinions. And those blog posts will use a high-level image, or they did use a high-level image, 
and that high level image can't capture the complexity of the real implementation. That meant I used to get super excited about these, go and try and implement it myself, and then all of a sudden hit some kind of logical hurdle that I needed to leap before I could get it working. And then after that, I had to work out how to make it compliant to work in the Liberty Mutual environment. So there was just developer overload with too much information. This was the problem. So how was I going to solve it? Well, the way I saw it was I had two options and it's really three, but the third is not an option. The first option was the path into the light, as you can see on the left. And that was saying, this is not a Liberty Mutual problem. This is actually an industry problem. So why not try and build a solution that can help everybody and put it out there and talk about it publicly. The path on the right, this was the path into the shadows, was let's just help ourselves. Let's build something behind our closed walls that say, Liberty Mutual's good. We've solved this problem, unlucky for everybody else, but we're good. The third option, which I didn't really have, was let's just run away from serverless and AWS altogether. Thankfully, I took the path on the left, which was Let's build something open source. Let's try and go out there into the industry and let's see if we can make it better for everybody. So in January of 2020, I actually tweeted out saying, be the change you want to see in the world. I've purchased cdkpatterns.com. If you want to grab some of the official CDK serverless patterns, this is where you're going to be. MVP will be a GitHub repo. And I really meant that. Whenever I launched this product, cdkpatterns.com just redirected to a GitHub README, and it stayed a GitHub README for a very long time. So I took all the feedback of all the users that were using the product and iterated and added patterns and added languages and refined to the point of where we are today, where we have cdkpatterns.com. Now, at the minute, we have 22 serverless patterns and counting from 15 pattern creators. And you can see we still have the beautiful high-level images we still have where they came from, but the difference is that now they're all in one place and we have a streamlined experience. So it doesn't matter if you're a TypeScript developer, a Python developer, a .NET developer, or a Java developer, you can just come in here, clone a pattern, run the tests, and deploy it. Now, full disclosure, the Java is still in a pull request, but hopefully I can get it merged soon. And for every one of these patterns, Getting it deployed is 90% of the battle. If you have something deployed in your account, especially through CloudFormation, you can tweak it to be whatever you need. But the final step, the final layer in this was I added all the links to the external references I could find for these patterns. That means that without leaving CDK patterns, you can deploy the thing and then you can find out why it's built the way it is. And the references aren't even always from AWS, like the Katie McCaffrey video there is amazing on the Saga pattern. And that was way before AWS, we're talking about Saga step functions. So I streamlined that part of it. And to me, that meant that the developer overload, this situation of things coming at you, it turned into bliss. You could just chill, go to the serverless shop. So if I did a Wardly mapping session with you, and we drew that your Spring Boot app should evolve into an API gateway with some Lambda functions or Fargate, you could just come into cdkpatterns.com and every component that is supported is there and you can just pick the one that was called out in the Wardly map and then that will show you every pattern that uses that component and you can just pick the most suitable one and deploy it. Or say you don't know what you want to build yet but you don't know what's possible We'll just look through all the patterns. They're right there from A to Z. So I was in this unusual position where I built a product, but then I had to market it externally. And as I said in the title, I didn't have a budget. I couldn't pay a marketing team to market this. So I sort of had to do it by myself. And that meant I was posting to GitHub. I created the Twitter handle. You can see at the bottom of the screen at CDK Patterns. I created a YouTube channel and have been posting videos of me talking about the patterns. And I've been blogging on the Practical Dev as well as a few other platforms, but we'll focus on these four. So how did that work out? Well, this is the social media engagement. You can see that the last article that went out on the Practical Dev had over 10,000 views and over 200 likes. 
The Deconstructing CDK Patterns YouTube channel, it constantly gets more followers and more watches, even though I haven't had the chance to upload as many videos as I would like. The Twitter channel, I cannot stress enough, this is just an account that tweets about serverless architectures and CDK. There is no personality in this account. It is not anything that I have introduced humor or anything banterous in it. This is just pure serverless architecture and it has over 1400 followers at this point. And the reason why I use this image is to show 18 tweets reached 80,000 people about serverless architectures. Now, if we look at who's actually talking about CDK patterns out there in the community, it's impressive. So we've had Eder Lessa, who invented the serverless lens of the well-architected framework, actually said, CDK patterns and NI developer are the gift that keeps on giving. If you haven't checked them out, please do. Nader Davit, who is huge in the AWS Amplify space and known for his rapid development, he contributed to one of the GraphQL patterns. Jeremy Daly, who's one of the most famous names in serverless, has included it in multiple newsletters. Corey Quinn, who is hilarious, actually introduced it in one of his newsletters with some free snark. Marcia Villalba has included it, who is a big YouTube star, works for AWS, but she's included it in multiple videos. And then I caught Adrian Cockcroft, who's vice president of cloud architecture strategy for AWS, actually watching one of the YouTube videos. And then the bottom left, you can see Eric Johnson, who's a legend, actually putting in that Liberty IT is doing amazing stuff and I'm a CDK giant. So it's safe to say people have been talking about CDK patterns. But let's look at a metric. It may be a vanity metric, but I still think it's worthwhile looking at. If you look at the GitHub stars, they've been pretty consistent in terms of growth, which I think is an awesome thing to see. The dip, uh, two thirds of the way up, if you look at the exact timing of that, we had bigger things to worry about in the world at that point in time. So that doesn't mean that there was a drop in popularity of the product, it's just things were going down. And if you look at the code base, in the last 14 days, there's been nearly 10,000 views from 1400 visitors. That means that your average visitor is looking at eight pages. So they're not just going to the front page of the front readme and then closing it. And there's also been over a hundred new clones. So you don't need to clone this every time. You only need to clone it the first time. So that means a hundred new customers, so to speak. Now let's look at where people are using CDK patterns. Uh, the map on the right was taken by one of those apps that randomly samples your Twitter followers. So this is analyzing the CDK Patterns Twitter account. And you can see it's pretty global. I mean, it's focused on America and Europe, but it's still used pretty much globally. And to demonstrate that on the left, South Korea, somebody actually translated one of the patterns into South Korean. In South Africa, you can see Rehan, who is an AWS hero, saying he'd rather go to these patterns than the official documentation, Pahud, along the bottom, who is in Taiwan. He's, he's built so many awesome constructs for the community, both serverless and non-serverless, and he's talked about it a lot. And then there's been quite a lot of followers in Japan. I haven't done any specific market research on the why, but I've noticed quite a lot of Japanese followers. So again, that was good. We had this product out there, we had this website. You could filter by component. You could just look through the patterns. I wasn't taking any of the credit because it's going to the true people who invented the patterns. But the problem was, eventually I was gonna to contribute to the same developer overload that I was trying to solve. If I introduced 500 patterns on the CDK patterns, how do you know which one to use? You're gonna to have to, you know, gotta catch them all, so to speak. You're gonna to have to go through every pattern and then make up your own opinion as to which one you think you should use and which use case. So how could I improve that situation? Introducing the AWS well-architected framework if you haven't seen it. It's built up of five pillars, operational excellence, security, reliability, performance efficiency, and cost optimization. This is how Amazon build, and this is how they think you should be building on top of their platform. It was originally released as a white paper but they then later refined it to include a tool in the actual AWS console called the Well-Architected Tool. What this was, it was 
a series of questions that you answered about your application and in the end you get a report with both good and bad things about your architecture that you might want to refine. The problem was that even with that general tool it was still too general and big for most architectures and that's why they started doing specific lenses and that's why Iterlesa created the serverless lens of the well-architected framework which is a version of this that's completely tailored to serverless workloads. And that is why I joined CDK Patterns with AWS Well Architected and specifically with the serverless lens. So if you go to cdkpatterns.com slash patterns slash well architected, you will see that I have broken it down by all of the questions. And then the questions aren't yes or no. A question includes multiple pieces of AWS best advice, best practices, for how to mitigate the problems. So that's why I've matched a pattern with a best practice. The example in this situation is the CloudWatch dashboard on the left. If you got a question about how do you observe your platform, then the best practice could be implement the CloudWatch dashboard and there you go. Just deploy it and you're 90% of the way there. So that then gained a bit more traction. So Andrew Robinson, from the AWS Well Architected team asked me, could we do a blog post together for the Well Architected blog? And of course I said yes. So we did that. It got shared on AWS's social media to over 6 million people. Jeff Barr tweeted about it. And I thought it was awesome to see people like Eric Pullen as performance pillar lead, tweeting that he loves them. Uh, Ron Rebensaft, who's CTO of Epsigon, which is an observability tool, actually sent me a message just to say he loved it. Julian Wood, who's a serverless developer advocate who's been focusing on the well-architected framework, called it a fantastic resource. And then Laura McFarland, who works for Liberty IT, tw tweeted that it's great to read. So it's always good to see it's actually getting to my own company as well. But that wasn't it. This happened on the 29th of September in AWS Summit Online Americas. Werner Vogels actually quoted me talked about CDK patterns and talked through two of the patterns. So the screenshot you can see on the right was taken from his keynote in this conference. This, this was just incredible. If you consider what I talked about at the start, which was I had two paths. One was to go outside and one was to stay inside. So this is the consequence of going outside. It reached the CTO of Amazon, which is just incredible. But that's not the end of the story. So I told you that I knew quite a lot of people were using CDK patterns because I could see the usage statistics, I could see the clones, I could see people talking about it on Twitter, I could see people following me on Twitter, I could see the map. But we'd never actually got together as a community and actually celebrated CDK, talked about how we're using it. So I sent a message to a few of my international friends and said, what if we just created one day one day that's all CDK. Um, we'll bring together all the CDK products, which is CDK for Terraform, CDK for Kubernetes, and AWS CDK. And two weeks later, we announced to the world that CDK Day was happening on the 30th of September. <laughs> Six weeks after that, we actually ran the conference. So it was, it was a wild ride, but the map on the right shows over 3,000 people signed up to attend, and this is where they came from. So CDK Day was global. And if you like our mascot in the bottom right, Pancakes, he also has a Twitter account. Um, so you can find it off CDK Day. But yeah, the reason why I bring this up is after CDK Day happened, I tweeted out that map and tagged Werner. Never in a million years expected Werner to reply. But I said, Werner, the whole globe must have been listening whenever you said that CDK is a game changer. And he replied with, Matt, you played an important role in the evolution of the CDK, so you should take big credit for its success. So this, this just shows you, I did not set out from the start to get Werner Vogels to talk about my product. This product was created to solve the problem inside Liberty that we needed to get to being rapid product delivery with a serverless first mindset. But by going external and going open source, the CTO of one of the largest companies on the planet is talking about my thing, which is incredible. 
So what did I learn in doing all this? The first thing I learned is be true to yourself and be true to your product. If you build something that's even moderately successful, everyone is going to have an opinion. Some of those opinions are going to be amazing. Some of them are going to be terrible. But the thing is, even if it's an amazing opinion, you need to stay true to why you're building your product. There's three or four alternate ways that have sprung up for how I could have built CDK patterns, but none of them would have solved my actual problem, which was we needed to get to serverless first. They would have, they would have been good, but they wouldn't have been what I wanted to build. And I don't think if you don't stick to what your truth is, you're not going to be passionate about the product and it will eventually tail off. The next thing is, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes over the past nine months. Even goes down to I put the wrong time zone on the CDK Day website. But at the end of the day, if you're honest, if you apologize, if you open up and say, listen, this is my bad, nobody is waiting behind a bush to jump out and laugh at you. It's a case of everybody understands. We're all in the same situation. Thirdly, be noisy. This is one that is, this one's harder to take because you presume if you have say a Twitter account with 1400 followers, that if you send a tweet out to say, here's a new pattern, that all 1400 see it, but that is not how Twitter works. Twitter is like a leaf floating down a stream that somebody has to be standing there at that exact moment to see it float by. So you need to work out they say the best time to tweet is in the morning before people go to work. So if you've got a global product like what I have, you need to be tweeting at various different points in the day. So you have to balance tweeting too much and being too noisy with only tweeting once and assuming your global audience is going to see it. The next thing is actually ask for help because this community is just incredible, both the Northern Irish tech community as well as the global AWS community. The catch is that you have to help the next person that needs it. And by that I mean you don't say, okay, I helped person X, therefore person X has to help me in the future. It's not that kind of system. It's we all help each other. So if you start taking the help but you don't give it back, I'm pretty sure eventually you won't get any more. And then finally, just have fun. This was us at CDK Day with Eric Johnson dressed as an otter because that was our, ma our mascot for the day. And this is us all just enjoying seeing him in it. So just as my last slide, I want to say I didn't take any time to jump into how this had transformed internally at Liberty, but that's okay because we've written a bunch of articles about it. So if you Google Liberty Serverless or Liberty Mutual Serverless, you can dive into exactly how we've transformed internally. You can visit cdkpatterns.com and check it out. And you can follow all of these people at the bottom on Twitter who are some of the people I recommend. Unfortunately, I could only fit nine onto a PowerPoint. There's about 90 that I would love to get in here, but if you follow these nine, you're doing okay. So hopefully you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for listening. And hopefully you will follow me on Twitter and check out the product.